Hi, my name is Tina Sparsino. I'm Gabriel Walsh's mom. Here to tell you a little bit about how Gabriel came to Florida Spine Institute. Uh, Gabriel uh, had a allergic reaction to a medication, and this was in Virginia, right before the hurricane hit. So August 2011. Right, August 2011, and unfortunately. When the symptoms hit, he wasn't found for four days. So he suffered extremes of neuroleptic malignant syndrome and rhabdomyolysis. And these um, caused him to be in a coma and in critical condition for many weeks. The rhabdo ate away at the muscles. He had kidney failure, liver failure respiratory failure, he was on a ventilator and eventually got a trach for breathing. Dialysis. He was on dialysis because the kidneys shut down. Two months. Yeah, two months. And uh, he had encephalopathy, a swelling in the brain. And some heart tracings on an EKG which were very fatal. Doctors said 95% mortality rate, go home and make funeral arrangements. But he lived. God had a, a use, a purpose for him to continue his life, and he struggled very hard after the coma to communicate and get stronger, and he was very weak, and came in and out of ICU units and was wound up being in the hospital eight months. And after eight months, he was 97 pounds and was in diapers. So he has done his exercises, worked with physical therapy, has done different things, but he just couldn't get past a certain point of being able to walk. You know, he could transfer, he could um, take a little bit of care of his personal self. They also thought that during the encephalopathy, which is the swelling of the brain, that he may have had a stroke. So that was on concurrently going on. So when Gabriel moved to Florida to my house, mom fattened him up real good. He's up to 170 pounds now. And um, we started coming to Florida Spine to see Dr. Hannah for pain management. And Dr. Hannah told us about the ketamine infusions, how much that they would help him because he also considered that he had RSD. And this was explained to me as the nerve damage in his legs was so severe because he was so close to death for so long that when his body came back to life, his legs didn't come back correctly. It just, the nerves were damaged. They were left him with neuropathy, which is a lot of tingling and burning and, and he could not walk and he could not use his hand. It was contractured and curled up from a possible stroke. The ketamine treatments also proved to have some special helpfulness for his body. Not only are we, try we're trying to get him to walk, but I think the stroke had left his voice very weak and his muscles in his neck and chest weak. And the ketamine kind of rebooted his brain because when on ketamine, his voice comes back to normal. You know, comes back deep and it comes back strong. And that was a surprise for both the doctor and myself. And um, also we found that um, the pain level would go down enough that he was able to stand without wobbling all over the place. Before he, he couldn't, he stood up, he had no muscles, he just wobbled. But increasing the muscle mass by doing physical therapy and the ketamine, he can stand up straight and not rock all over the place, which was unexpected as well. Amazing. Yeah, so when I left the Norfolk General Hospital from and they cleared me medically finally after the months and months I was there. Um, I went to Sheltering Arms 
which played a big part of my recovery that was in Richmond, Virginia, in a rehab hospital. And, you know, at that point I could, could barely speak. I, could, I couldn't lift my body up or I couldn't do anything. I couldn't lift my legs up. I couldn't lift my feet up. I could do. And I had, from my knees down, I had just awful burning, like, I mean, it was, it was like no pain I've ever felt before. It was really horrible. Um, and they told me that the nerves were the slowest thing in the body to heal. That they heal about a millimeter a day. And it's really painful, but they tell me that, you know, it's good that they hurt pain because it means the nerves aren't dead. They said if it's numb, then the nerves are dead, so. Like, even though the pain is awful, it's a good thing because so it's a double edged sword. Like, I was glad of the pain because it was meant that my nerves were dead, but it was just, uh, it left me with a horrible uh, quality of life and just it limited me a lot as far as what I could do in physical therapy and as far as what I, I mean. Like my mom said, when I st stood, I was really wobbly. I couldn't, you know, I, I could get past that. And so when I came, finally came here in, in uh, February of 2014, I think I started seeing Dr. Ham in March of 2014, uh, originally for pain management because the nurse had, hit, had healed down to about my feet, but my feet were still that had that really burning, awful sensation. I just, I mean, it was, I couldn't sleep. I mean, it was just so awful. It was, I mean, it was the worst pain I ever felt, for sure. And so, I mean, I guess that would be a 10, because, I mean, I don't know, I haven't had a hacksaw like, <laughs> take my arm or anything, but I mean, that pain was just the worst I ever felt, so. Um, doctor with medication was able to get that a little under marked or controlled, probably to about like, a, you know, more of like an eight or seven or six, depending on the day. And, and then he had also mentioned the ketamine and that took a couple of months to get started. But once it did start, I had the initial treatments and I met, my voice was really slow. I think it was hard for my mind to make connections. Like I would stutter a lot because I could think of simple words like dashboard or windowsill or you know, mix up the two. And so the ketamine really helped me as a side effect besides the pain. It helped me, my voice and my mind just it got a lot better and I was able to speak more like myself and um, I've also been diagnosed with major depression disorder since I was young and as of late the last few years they've had a really hard time getting that under control and, and you know trying to help that and since I've been on the ketamine it's been another huge thing that it's helped my depression immensely. Like I, I'm able to stay on one medication on a fairly low dose and my mood is, is fine and, and you know stable so that's another great side effect and uh, I mean the pain is has gone down immensely like you know maybe from a six to a four it doesn't sound like a lot but I mean to me it's the world like I mean, it doesn't take the, pain, it has to take the pain away as of yet, but I mean, it makes it completely tolerable so I can actually, you know, work on a bike and work on strengthening my muscles and I've been able to walk straight and, you know, walk, I mean, just with, unassisted without, you know, a, a cane or a walker, or, you know. I'm able to do long distances, but I can do short distances, which I could never do before. So, and that way the ketamine has helped me immensely. And I, Dr. Hannah has done just great work, and I really appreciate it. So, uh, um, going forward.
support, you know, I, I, I'm, like I said, I'm about a four right now as far as pain and, and I'm able to, to exercise and do physical therapy and I have a, a bike at home, like a recumbent bike, I think it's called, and I'm able to, you know, ride that every day and, and just work at walking every day and I mean, I, I, I definitely feel like I have a future, you know, before I, you know, it's just taken so long to get better that I, I really started getting frustrated and I got to a point where I wasn't really forward and like ketamine just really jumped up forward and and so I did the original two weeks of ketamine and I'm doing um, booster shots, doing those every couple of weeks right now are trying to pretty aggressively attack this because it's, it's really helping a lot and so you know right now every two weeks or every once a month depending you know I'll keep doing that and then you know from there I mean I'll do that for the next few months and then you know I'm hoping through that time that you know I could build up my muscles, build up the muscles on my legs and be able to get to walk on my own and, and so, you know, my goal is for the summer but, you know, we'll see how that works, you know, and, and how that goes. I, I know he'll walk again. I know because the difference that I see from the past almost year, no comparison. He laid in bed, he could barely transfer. He was very depressed. He he had no quality of life, and his quality of life has increased a great deal. The more he can do for himself, the more the better he feels about himself. The more courage it gives him. The more faith it gives him in life again, and he has hope. And hope you can't lose hope. If you lose hope, you don't have anything. And uh, Dr. Hannah has given us hope, and that's a big thing.